Many people over 50 dream of one day being financially independent. But unfortunately, after decades of overspending, unexpected health expenses, poor planning, and low income for some people, that goal seems more and more distant, if not impossible. But just because that goal isn't in sight doesn't mean it's not reachable. It just means you need a good plan. In this episode of Over 50 TV, I'm going to outline a five-step plan that can help you achieve financial independence, or at the very least, can help you live a more financially comfortable life. That's all up next, right here on Over 50 TV. Welcome back to Over 50 TV, where we provide essential work and money tips for people over 50. My name is Lou Reyes. Well, before I tell you the steps that people can take to achieve financial independence, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Over 50 TV. You can do that rather easily just by clicking that little red button. It's underneath the screen. Now, there's also a little bell. If you smash that little bell every single time we upload a new video, You'll be notified in your inbox. Achieving financial freedom is difficult, if not impossible, without a plan. In this episode, I'll outline five steps that you can take that'll help you to reach that goal. Now, I believe pretty much anyone, anyone can follow these steps, but it's the people who are truly, truly committed to following these steps that are the folks that are most likely to achieve their goal of financial independence. So let's start with a step that is obvious, but a step that's rarely taken. Save. You know, it's important to have at least three months worth of expenses saved up. If you don't, that should be your singular focus. And you're going to want to do that for two important reasons. First, you're now unprepared for any emergency that will require cash. And yeah, many emergencies do require cash. Now, if you don't have it, you're going to have to go into your high interest rate credit cards, and that's only going to plant you deeper in the hole. Now, second, it's just smart fiscal policy to have a cash reserve. The discipline it takes to save that money and not touch it unless there's an emergency, that in itself is a victory. And it's a big step, a big step towards your financial freedom. Now, we all know that money held in reserve, whether it's in a shoebox underneath your bed or, or in a savings account at a bank. It's really not earning cash, so just save enough money to cover your expenses. No more and no less. Step number two, create a financial plan. You know, a financial plan can work for most folks. The problem is most people don't have a plan. They go to work, they get their paycheck, and they spend their hard-earned money on whatever bill is due at that moment. And the last thing on their mind is to save. But a popular plan for spending and saving is one that was proposed by Senator Elizabeth Warren, who used to teach it when she was a bankruptcy professor. It's called the 50-30-20 rule. And this plan says you should reserve 50% of your budget for essentials like rent and food, 30% for discretionary spending, and at least 20% for savings. These percentages, they're not set in stone. Different financial experts suggest different percentages. Some even go a step further and suggest you have a plan that includes multiple subcategories like save X percentage for entertainment, X percentage for food, X percentage for, for utilities. Now, I don't believe an investment roadmap needs to be that detailed. Let me suggest what I consider a good alternative to Mrs. Warren's formula. Instead of following her 50-30-20 rule, I suggest following a 75-25 plan. Now, this plan reserves 75 cents of every dollar to cover your bills, 20 cents to investing, and 5 cents gets pumped into your savings account, keeping, keeping you at a minimum of three months of expenses in that account. When you have the minimum covered in your savings account, then go ahead and funnel the rest into your investment account. Now, one more thing about savings. You can make this step easier when you automate, automate the process by, by setting up automatic transfers from your, from your checking account to your savings account. The next step, invest your money. Well, you can do this by spreading your investments across multiple assets. But the question is, what kind of asset do you want to own? Do you want to, to invest in assets that offer cash flow like rental property and, and dividend paying stocks? Or do you prefer investing in assets that appreciate over time? Well, the answer, of course, it depends on your investment goals. 
As for me, in the past, I preferred to invest in assets that appreciated over time like real estate and businesses. I believe those assets offered me the best opportunity for a big payday when I sold those assets. But I did learn the hard way that this could be a risky investment strategy because there are just too many variables. Adverse market conditions, they can cause the value of those assets to plummet, and they plummet with no opportunity for recovery. Today, I think a better investment strategy is to invest in assets that give you good cash flow and also invest in assets that are likely to appreciate. For example, stocks that offer regular dividends, they're usually a good investment, and so are stocks that are likely to appreciate over time. Now, I still like investing in privately owned businesses, but I no longer put all of my eggs, all of my eggs in that one basket. Find ways to earn more money. Now, please don't think I'm suggesting that you take a time-sucking, part-time job that pays pennies. This is a horrible long-term or or short-term strategy for pretty much anyone, anyone looking to earn more cash. Taking a part-time job, it's emotionally draining, and over time, over time, it's going to wear you out physically. Consider earning more money by starting a side hustle. And there are probably dozens of side hustles you can start The growth of social media, it's given each one of us the tools to build a small business that could become a big business if we're determined to do that. Building a side hustle can be done on your time with minimal investment. Done right, a side hustle can also become a valuable asset that that you can sell later on. Recently, we launched Side Hustle Theater on Patreon, where where we create programming to help you create a profitable side hustle. Our new gig, it's not for people who want to dabble in business. Side Hustle Theater is for people who are serious about making money. If this interests you, check us out by clicking on the link, a link I'll put in the description box. The final step is to watch your back. Now, this is actually a post-financial independence step. And I decided to include this because I believe most of you, if you follow the steps, follow the five steps that we've outlined or the four steps we've outlined, I believe you can achieve financial freedom. I also know it's important to watch your back because I know that there are plenty of people out there who are very willing to borrow from you, steal what it took you years to build, or maybe even just whittle down your investment by charging you exorbitant fees. And I know that if you don't watch your back, you're going to find out the hard way. Now, here are some some things that I think you should watch out for. Number one, don't dip into your savings to loan money, even if it's to a best friend. If that situation arises, the best way you can help your friend is to show them how to help themselves. Another thing to watch out for, pay attention to the fees. Small fees can add up to a big expense. Every fee should be transparent. Challenge every unreasonable fee, no matter how small it is. If you own a business, make sure you have insurance and a good attorney. People will sue you at the drop of a dime if they believe you have money. The other thing, avoid business partners if you can help it. I learned that a greedy business partner will gleefully rob you blind if you turn your back or become too trusting. If you must have a business partner, make sure you have an ironclad legal agreement between that person and you. Lastly, don't fall in love with your investment or a business. View both as assets that can be bought and sold. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you today. And I've just given you five steps that I believe will be of major help to you if, if you are striving, if you're determined to become financially independent. Now, if you have any questions, I just ask you to go ahead and put those questions in the comments section, and I will answer them as quickly as possible. I look forward to your questions, and I really do try to do my best to to get them as as soon as as I possibly can. So that's about all I've got for you today. As I said, I will ask you, though, one more thing before I forget. I will ask you to please subscribe to Over 50 TV. You can do that rather easily. Just hit that little red button. It's underneath your screen. There's also a little bell. If you hit that little bell, every single time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification in your inbox. Well, as I always say, Have a great day, everybody.